Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Siti Nofakir binti Shimam Yusof and my metric number is 198640. My partner is Raja Ashahida Tuli Hidayah binti Raja Asman with metric number 198293. Today we will present to Dr. Mai about our hazard analysis and critical control point which is our hazard report. This is our table of content, which consists of overview, pillar table, and all the 13 steps that will be need in the hazard plan. So based on the trigger, the MOH has suspended the production of bottle of from Mali company because it was found that it has been contaminated with Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and also the product has been suspended from being exported to Singapore. So this is the filler table. So the company has wished to obtain the HACCP to improve the safety of the product. And we as the food technologist has been assigned to a task, which is to develop HACCP plan. And we need to follow the guideline through MS1480 to 2009 to ensure that the plan is compliant with the requirement for the HACCP certification. So for the step one, which is manage commitment, the Mali Mineral Water Company Shandirian Berhad is committed to follow quality and consistency standard on what we pursue at all time and focus on our quality control and assurance with the application of HACCP and GMP principle as the food safety policy. For this food safety objective, we have four target and four food safety objective, which is food testing result and our target is absent from microbe contamination and the person in charge which is has a team leader. The customer complaint, which is our target, is not more than two cases, and the person in charge is sales manager for food safety training, at least eight hours per employee. This is also will be charged by has a team leader, and for being top five supplier performance, is in charge in for is in charge by quality manager. So for the scope of the HACCP system, the products supplied to this HACCP plan are mineral and drinking water from brand under Mali Mineral Water Sendirian Berhad, as we can see in this slide, which is Sukahati and Rofina product. Next, which is production sites, which are covered by the HACCP plan are catchment area or surface water here, the production area, packaging area, waste disposal, storage area, distribution site, and also the washroom. Next, we proceed to step two, which is assemble has a team. This is our organizational chart, which consists of, which is led by general manager. And we can see the purchase manager, chief executive manager, and the four under chief executive manager, we have marketing, finance, production manager, and also quality control. Um, as we can see, the quality control consists of chemists and microbiologists because we we need the person that have well trained to see uh, what is the microbe and what is the chemical content in our drinking and mineral water. So this uh, we can see here for the job scope uh, for food safety team leader. Uh, she is need to gather the team members and ensure a successful HACCP system. Also, she needs to ensure the customer feedback, make sure that all the production system from raw material to product are running effectively and efficiently. And also she needs to control the source of raw material and trace all the records on all the processing line until the raw materials become product and also verify the has a plan. Uh, as we can see, most of the workers or most of the position in this company have been have been sent to the internal audit training or HACCP train, HACCP training because we need to, uh, we need to have a experience or a well trained in this HACCP, uh, in this HACCP group because we doesn't want any, uh, we doesn't want any. Because we doesn't want any flaws uh, in our group. The next is uh, quality assurance executive. Uh, so the job prescription is produce has a plan and also to provide guidance to the HACCP members. 
Uh, also, we have a production officer being a production manager, lab manager become a food microbiologist, the technical manager to become the product specialist, a consultant, which is a specialist in wastewater management or treatment, and also HR manager, which she will, uh, the job prescription is for keeping the all related record in with HACCP to ensure all employees are competent and skilled to assist with file migration audits and also perform administrative take as needed. She also has been in, has been sent to the internal audit training and ISO 22000 food safety management system training to for well trained in this HACCP group. Next, which is this description of the product, as you can see in the left, which is Sukahati drinking water. Uh, it, it, the raw material is only water, the chemical characteristic, as we can see here, the pH must be 7, hardness limit is 75 to 115 ppm, the chloride content should not be exceed 250 ppm, it must be free ammonia, and if it visible in the drinking water, it must be not exceed 0 0.15 milligram per liter, the organic matter does not exceed 0 0.3 milligram, and also the iron, manganese, copper sulfate, and fluoride. Uh, these are the required PPM uh, need to be uh, need to be present in the drinking water. Next, we go to physical characteristic, which is the liquid, colorless, and odorless is one of the characteristic of the drinking water. The stability must be clear. Temperature from 10 degrees Celsius and not more than 25 degrees Celsius. In, if it's being produced and it must be free from foreign matter. The microbi microbiological characteristic is it must not be more than one coliform present in 100 milliliter. The process type that uh, being undergo is mechanical and chemical filtration and the spe special distribution control is shipping and storage shall be carried out by normal vehicle. So description continue. Uh, it is a ready to drink. The shelf life consists from six to twelve months. The market place is hypermarket or vending machine. Uh, the packaging type is polyethylene triphosphate, which is PET, or the regular packaging for mineral or bottled water. Uh, the labeling is it is can be recycled after being used. The target customer is general population, students and adults. Uh, so it doesn't have any allergen and it is free from foreign matter. The intended use is the serving size is 500 milliliter. It is a ready to drink. Uh, infants and elderly is one of the vulnerable group because uh, infants have uh, not properly developed their immune system while elderly have a weakened immune system as they get older. The potential hazard that may be present is microbial, chemical, and also physical. And our target consumer is general population, but uh, we are especially to adults. Next, for the process flow diagram and plant schematic and onset verification of flow diagram in step five and six, we proceed to process flow diagram first before the schematic plan. So we can see here the catchment area. Uh, from the catchment area, it undergo pre-chlorination, coagulation, mixing, sand filter, post-chlorination, storage tank before uh, it must go emergency chlorination if needed before going to storage or wish or airing sink. So we can see in this flow, we have three CCP and this CCP will be going through in deeper uh, and will be explained by my partner in the uh, next step. So this plan has been verified by the HACCP team leader in the first June. Next, we proceed to plan schematic diagram. As we can see here, the green one is the is where the raw materials is coming from, while the black arrow is uh, after the after the raw material being produced, which is the drinking water, will be uh, will going out here and uh we'll move to the product store and the product outlet gate and uh before uh it will go to distribution and storage 
Next, we proceed to step seven and eight, which is hazard analysis and determine the CCP. For our raw material, we have only one raw material, which is water, since our product is drinking water. So we can see um, they have three potential hazards, as mentioned before, which is biological, chemical, and physical. The bacteria may, may come uh, into the water from variety of sources of because the water is get from the catchment area. So the bacteria listed is the bacteria that was found in the groundwater. The chemical uh, such as heavy metal is tend to adhere to sediment in the lakes or groundwater. Next, for the physical, during water collection and storage, foreign metals might be present due to physical cross-contamination. And we decide water uh, is not a sensitive material. Sensitive material. Next, we proceed to the packaging. Uh, we have only one type of packaging, which is polyethylene terephthalate, which is the bottle plastic. Uh, we also have three potential hazards here, which is biological, chemical, and physical. The biological, such as uh, Staphylococcus aureus, we can see that uh, may, it may come from cross-contamination during transportation of raw materials due to improper storage. Uh, the chemical that may come in this PET bottle is bisphenol A, which is BPA. Uh, it may come from the, during the manufacturing of the bottle itself and also the physical such as pest, insect and dust may come from the cross-contamination of raw materials due to improper storage condition. Uh, we have uh, decided to make the PET as one of the sensitive, uh, sensitive uh, material. Next, we go to the process step. Uh, as you can see, we have catchment area and pre-chlorination in this slide. So uh, as you can see here, catchment area uh, need a critical control point because uh, because this is the first method uh, which uh, we take the raw material itself so uh, that's why it needs a critical control point and here we have three potential hazards like biological chemical and physical it's same as the water before uh, in the pre-chlorination uh, it doesn't need the critical control point and it can be uh, it can be controlled by membrane filtration itself. Next we go to coagulation, flocculation or sedimentation. This process need uh, also need a CCP like filtration and also post dechlorination. Mm, in filling we doesn't uh, in filling, capping, storage of treated water and distribution, this uh, process doesn't need any CCP because uh, in post dechlorination here we have target that there is no there is no microbiological or potential hazard that may be uh, that may have been present. So that's why we have uh, only three CCP in uh, in this process. Okay, so uh, I think that's all from me. I will pass to next presenter. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and hi. So I will continue the presentation for the step 9, 10 and 11. For this step, we establish the critical limit for each CCP, monitoring system and corrective action. So why we need to establish this critical limit monitoring system and the corrective action? For the critical limit, it represents the value or parameters that is acceptable for the food safety. If the values we are monitoring fall outside the critical limit, we will face the greater risk to the consumer health. To the consumer health. That's why we need to have the limit in order to uh, control the system so that the system is not um, risky to the consumer health. Therefore, each critical limit should be as strict as any legal limit that applies to the processes. So for the monitoring, monitoring is the planned sequence of measurement and observation that determine whether the CCP is under control or not. So we need to monitor in the duration of time, like monthly, like weekly or daily. And monitoring system is also important part of the record keeping and future verification. And the last one is the corrective action. Why we need the corrective action? Because it is important when there are any problem occur 
um, in this in each TCP. So the corrective action is needed. We record and tabulate all of this in one table. The first TCP is the catchment area, and these are the critical limit monitoring system and the corrective action. For the critical limit, we need to control the temperature of the sample and light intensity during the detection. And in for the monitoring system, we monitor the acute toxicity detector where we control the temperature of the sample collected and light intensity when conducting the detector task. And when we conduct the monitoring system is every after the collection or every after the catchment. And who is responsible in the monitoring system is the maintenance supervisor. And if there are any problem occur, we need to do the corrective action where we recollection of the water at the catchment area. And we need also to inform the technician to reconducting the test the detector test by checking the light, the right temperature and light intensity during the detection. So next is the coagulation, coagulation or sedimentation CCP. Uh, in this CCP, we need to control the critical limit, which are pH condition, coagulate, coagulant dose, mixing speed, and also the time. And in the mon monitoring system, we monitor the coagulant, the coagulant parameters such as pH, coagulation dose, and mixing speed during coagulation process. And when we do the monitoring, it's monthly. And who is responsible? It is also maintenance supervisor. And is there any problem occur? Uh, we need to stop the coagulation, re-optimizing all the parameters needed in the coagulation process, like checking the pH, dose use, and the, checking the mixing speed. And we need to re-operate again for the several times to check the effectiveness and to check the efficiency of the coagulation process. Next is the filtration. In this filtration, we have several critical limits like the media size, fluoride, and also time filtration process occur. On the system, we have we need to control the filtration. We're making sure that the media is in the right size, check on the fluoride of the water during the filtration, and operate the filtration at time given. And the filtration is also need to rewash or it's called as backwash after the filtration process occurs. And when we do the monitoring, it's every during the filtration process, and maintenance supervisor is responsible. If there are any uh, problem occur in the filtration process, we need to stop the filtration, uh, check for any sedimentation or clogging in the filter media, and check for any leaking in the filter. If there if there any leaking or clogging, we need to rewash the filter and try to reoperate again with the control fluoride and sign. And regular backwashing and cleaning monthly must be done. And the last CCP is the post dechlorination. And there are four critical limits in this process in this process: membrane effective area, pressure, fluoride, and pH. And for the monitoring system, we need to control the ultra filtration, or it's called as membrane filtration, where we check the membrane effective area, we check the pressure, we check the fluoride and initial pH during the ultra filtration. And we also need to check the dose of fluorination. And when we do the monitoring system, is every time after, the, every time before the post fluorination and also monthly. And maintenance supervisor is also responsible in this process. And for the corrective action, we need to stop the filtration. We need to check for any mole low molecular mass because low molecular mass like sodium, calcium, magnesium, chloride, and sulfate, it, it can interfere with the filtration system and can make the filtration system become not effective. And we need to recheck the pressure, we need to recheck the fluoride, initial pH before we start the filtration again. If, if the initial pH that we need to control is low, you, we can add the lime or calcium oxide to raise the pH in this system, in this process. So next step is the established verification process, verification procedure. Why we need the verification procedure? Each of the plans developed at the uh, organization require verification and validation before we confirm them. Uh, as ready for use on the floor and this really the verification procedure is um, made uh, on site work. Okay, this is verification procedure in the first CCP where the temperature and light intensity during the detection are controlled and also checked once monthly by the QC manager and plan manager. And for the next CCP, the verification procedure is we perform and checking optimum coagulation process in all aspects like including pH, coagulant dose, speed of mixing, uh, once a month by the quality control manager. And for the filtration, uh, verification procedure, we check in the, and control the size of filtration media, fluoride of the water, and adjusting the cycle of that washing the filter. And this is done by the plant manager and is done every month. 
And the last step is the post dechlorination and the verification procedure is we adjusting and controlling the membrane filtration or ultra filtration system once a month by the quality control manager and also the plant manager. So including the two steps. Finally, the document control, including the record keeping, it will keep the all the system up to date. And the key activities associated with the hazard plan must be recorded. For example, including the critical limit monitoring logs, testing and calibration log, corrective action log, and verification log. So there are a few examples of the document control. In the first CCP, um, for the document control, we have every collection record and monthly QC record. Next, uh, second CCP, we have hazard, hazard audit report and maintenance log. Filtration, we have hazard, hazard audit report and maintenance log. And the last one is post declination. We have daily production record, daily line, quality control record, and the maintenance log. To sum up, in order to improve the food safety and reduce the risk of safety hazard input, the company must apply for the hazard analysis and physical control point, which is a hazard system, from the raw material from the farm to the consumers, in which the company must develop 12 steps um, of the hazard plan. Hazard system is a systematic and globally recognized approach. Uh, where it can control the potential biological, physical, and chemical hazards that threaten the integrity of each food product and make the food uh, safe to be consumed to the consumers. That's all from me and Fakira. Thank you.